Welcome. NOAA has just released its global and US climate report for May of 2014. And for the second month in a row, the global climate has set new high temperature records. As you can see from this map, there are many areas around the globe that have set new record high temperatures. There are no areas on the globe that have set new record low temperatures. This is the fingerprint of global warming. Here I show three graphs. The one at the top is the comparative temperature for land and ocean combined for the months of May going back over 135 years. It was three quarters of a degree above the 20th century average, making May the warmest May on record. The land surface temperature was 1.1 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, making it the fourth hottest May on record. The ocean was 0.6 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, making it the hottest May on record, tied with 1998, the year of the major El Nino. Now let's take a look at the two hemispheres separately. In the northern hemisphere, it was the third warmest May on record, whereas in the southern hemisphere, it was the hottest May on record. But you might say, what's well, 135 years? However, we can go back much further than that. Using tree rings, ice cores, boreholes, lake sediments and stalagmites, we can go back over 2,000 years. When you do, you get models like this, showing that the modern peak of temperatures is much higher than anything we've seen over the last 2,000 years. However, that will depend on what data you use or how heavily you weight each data type. So let's take a look at an ensemble of such models using different weights and different sorts of data. Here is an ensemble of such models. You can see that they don't necessarily agree very well. However, they all show that the modern peak in temperature is much higher than anything that's happened in the last 2000 years. So unless we get a major volcanic eruption or some sort of freakish weather, the temperatures are likely to continue to go higher over the next few months. Why? Because of this. It looks as though El Nino is about to return. And when that happens, global temperatures will certainly rise very quickly. It's somewhat frightening that we're getting record high temperatures and we're technically still in an Enzo neutral period, which means it's neither El Nino or La Nina. NOAA is now predicting during the Northern Hemisphere summer that there is a 70% chance of an El Nino developing, and that chance rises to 80% during the autumn and winter months. Here is a plot of the Arctic sea ice extent. 2014 is shown in blue, and as you can see it is tracking close to some of the lowest years on record so far, and well below the long term average. Let's take a quick look around the globe and see what major climate events have occurred in the month of May. In North America, Alaska experienced its sixth warmest May on record. The drought in the southwest US is getting worse, now 37% of the country is in drought conditions. Colombia and Venezuela are also experiencing much below average precipitation, whereas Argentina is getting much more than average precipitation. Most of Europe, Africa and Australia have been suffering from high temperatures throughout May. It is worth noting that every time you break a record, it becomes that much more difficult to break the next one. So first we had April break the all-time April record, and now we've had May do the same. So it is quite worrying to be setting new records, even at a time when we do not have an El Nino operating. Get ready for a long, hot summer. <laughs>